Hello, my name is Elmore Alexander and I'm a principal consultant with Optimal Campus. The focus of this session is to explore the impact of COVID-19 on higher education. Joining me are Nuno Kudo, the Optimal founder and principal consultant, and Michael Ginsberg, another of Optimal's principal consultants. Unquestionably, the COVID-19 crisis is the most significant crisis to have hit the world, our nation, and higher education in decades. Michael, can you give us a quick overview of the impact on universities? Sure. COVID-19 has changed almost everything about higher education. Uh, how we deliver education was a huge shift from face-to-face -to, -face to online where students will attend colleges and universities if they attend at all, how our institutions operate on a daily basis with closed campuses, remote work, ubiquitous Zoom meetings, how we interact with one another, faculty, students, and staff at a safe distance and often not face-to-face, -face. our costs and cost structures, basically everything has increased, our infrastructure needs, we probably need fewer buildings and more telecommunications capacity, and our prospects for the future, and even our probability of survival. Wow, that's a lot of change. Now, there were many, many underlying problems that existed before COVID-19 hit us. Can you talk a bit about how that relates in terms of the issues that were already present? Happy to do so. You know, before COVID-19, Many schools faced issues of declining enrollments of traditional students and over-reliance on international students who were paying full freight. For public institutions, continually declining state support, uh, rising costs of facilities and people, ever-increasing tuition discount rates, questioning by parents and students the value proposition of higher education, and increasing resistance by students and parents to the ever-growing costs of higher education, tuition, fees, and living costs. COVID-19's made all of that worse. Domestic students are questioning where or even if they should go to school. International students are staying away from the U.S. State budgets have gone to hell, and hence there's even less state support. Family budgets have been seriously impacted, and they, they are less able to pay more financial aid is needed, and we have steeply rising costs in the face of shrunken revenue. A tough situation. Let's pivot just a little bit. Nuno, clearly from what Michael was talking about, IT has become a much, much more critical part of the function of universities than it ever was before. What do you see as being the IT changes that are happening right now in higher education? One thing for sure is IT is getting a higher level of, of respect. IT is becoming more of a strategic partner than a, a service provider, and certainly more of a strategic partner than I think anyone would even have imagined. I've been in conversations with very high level people at various universities where they have stated that the highest levels of the university are reaching out to personally thank the IT leadership and team for the help that uh, they have provided. To some extent, almost considered saviors. But that has also put more responsibility on the shoulders of IT. IT needs to be thinking more innovatively than, than ever before. And in a shorter time, in uh, a month, two months, in some cases, just a couple of weeks, IT leaders and, and, and their respective uh, subordinates have had to come up with solutions that normally would take, in some cases, many months or, or even years. And in an ever-changing environment of government direction or, or lack thereof. So more money is being thrown in to, to, to IT to support the COVID efforts. But honestly, I think that that's only the beginning. There's a lot a lot of other future trade just coming. Now, Michael, what are colleges and universities going to need to do in light of all of these issues to, to be able to thrive in a post-COVID world? I think that colleges and universities need to rethink their education model. They need to ask, what is their value proposition? What do they do better than others? 
why should a student come to institution A rather than go somewhere else? It implies you need to always ask, what do we keep doing and what do we shed? Both in terms of academic programs and other activities, co-curricular and support as well. Um, we need to ask, how can you provide a high value experience more efficiently? Uh, what is the MVP? And by that, I don't mean most valuable player, but something entrepreneurs talk about all the time. What is your minimum viable product? Uh, what can you outsource? Uh, where can partnerships be helpful? Interesting. Those are some real challenges out there. Let's sort of focus on summing things up. Let me come first to you, Nuno. What do you think IT operations are going to look like two, three years out uh, as universities have changed how they focus on IT? I think that's going to depend on, on the university. And the more they follow Michael's advice to be innovative and entrepreneurial, the more IT will be tasked with supporting that, uh, that, that move. You know, a lot of things are happening already in terms of some of the trends that I'm about to mention. But as we all know, COVID has just exponentially expedited these changes. So hybrid learning, remote learning, certainly that's been around for a, for a while and certainly got a kick in the rear with COVID. But we're going to need to be supporting and building enhanced hybrid learning. Mm -hmm. Once everyone has hybrid learning or remote learning, how do you differentiate yourself? Well, you're going to have to enhance the student experience. Mm -hmm. Universities, IT organizations are going to be heavily, heavily involved in, in making that happen. You know, how do you create a richer remote learning experience? Mm -hmm. Also, there is a huge trend for more individualized just-in-time learning. Uh, you know, how do a lot of people learn these days? They go on a YouTube video and determine how to do X, Y, or Z, just in time. That is coming to the university. So is individualized credentialing, where students, I believe, in the future will be able to take portions of an education from various universities and put it together into a very unique individualized credential. That will depend on IT making it happen through technologies, potentially, such as blockchain, AI. AI-driven teaching will continue to grow. And again, a technology that IT will be heavily involved in rolling out. And all of this, while higher ed will be threatened by lots of venture capital money who is seeing the opportunity to do things differently in this new world, um, there will be more and more companies backed by a lot of money trying to disrupt and will disrupt higher ed education model. People are going to be, have to be extremely entrepreneurial, as Michael mentioned. Very interesting perspective, Nuno. Michael, let me turn to you for final thoughts. Uh, what's the university going to look like two, three, four years from now? You know, I can't disagree with anything that my colleague has just said. Um, I think the post-COVID higher education world is going to be totally different. Maybe uh, a little bit frightening, but I think it's quite likely that at least 25% of, of all higher education institutions are going to cease to exist, at least cease to exist in their current independent form. The move to online education isn't going to totally reverse. A high percentage of all higher education will continue to be all online. And I think that while we're seeing the disappearance of a number of institutions, we're going to see some large, well-resourced institutions grow bigger and richer. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, it's certainly been an interesting six months, and it's going to be a very, very interesting next few years, and appreciate your insights on those. Yes. Thank you very much for providing those perspectives this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.